theory, uh, reinforcement learning theory, and he has made a bunch of uh, great contributions uh, to this field, mostly on the side of offline reinforcement learning, but also dabbling in a number of other fields as well. And uh, I guess uh, that's all I have to say here. So it's my pleasure to pass, pass it over to Masa. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction, Gengo. Uh, can I start? Sure, okay. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about our recent work, representation learning for online and offline RL in low rank MDPs. First, I'm going to give you the overview of our work. Our work is about representation learning and reinforcement learning. And as you know, representation learning is very like important in reinforcement learning. The standard procedure in RL is, for example, like we have a data set and we perform representation learning that is learning a feature phi in a nonlinear manner, for example, like using neural networks. And then uh, after getting that feature, we uh, solve some downstream tasks, right? However, like theory-wise, we often assume that we know features a priori and models are linear in that feature. And many models like uh, linear MDPs or like a Gaussian process basically have that property. However, like as I mentioned, like the practical, the practical way is learning feature in a data-driven manner. So there's a gap like between theory and practice. Our goal is to, so our goal is to design a statistically and comp computationally efficient algorithm for representation learning and reinforcement learning. I'd like to give you the high level summary. To, it, to handle like representation learning and reinforcement learning, we consider low rank MDPs. In low rank MDPs, the sole assumption is it is low rank. So we don't assume features are known. Just low rank MDPs are good models uh, to discuss representation learning in reinforcement learning. Our first contribution is proposing online RL algorithms on low rank MDPs. And first, it is computationally efficient. And secondly, it has tight sample complexity. Uh, comparing to the previous state of the art called Flambe, uh, you can see that sample complexities are much better. So here, like D, denotes the rank of low rank MDPs. And A denotes the number of actions. And epsilon is the sort of optimality gap. And one over one minus gamma is a horizon factor. Wait, wait a second, Masa. Uh, I'm not sure I can see the slide. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, now, now. Yeah, right, so. that's, that's, yes, thank you for yeah, pointing out. So now uh, probably you can see, so now like you can see that uh, sample complexity is much better uh, than the uh, previous work. And again, D is the length of low rank MDP and A is the number of actions and epsilon is the sub optimality gap and one of one minus gamma is a horizon factor. So that's like our first contribution. The second contribution is we propose a new offline RL algorithm for low rank MDPs. So here, like we switch to the uh, offline setting. And again, uh, our algorithm is computation efficient and it works under partial coverage, which means that we don't require full coverage. So here, full coverage means that uh, the offline data <coughs> the, is fully exploratory. In other words, it covers the whole state and action space. But of course, it doesn't hold in practice. And here, we are saying that our algorithms works even if the offline data is not fully exploratory. 
So that's the meaning of partial coverage. And I'm going to give you the precise definition later. And this is a whole summary. And I want to really emphasize that the online part, offline part, like we're going to give you the proof. And this proof is really challenging. And I think it's very interesting. So I hope like you can enjoy like, that proof uh, later. Next, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, preliminary stuff. Here is our online setting. First, uh, robots are agents, and the world is the environment. And agents can execute a policy, and the world gives next uh, gives a reward, and also next state. And since we're going to talk about online setting first, so we always assume that we can execute a policy from a initial fixed state S0. And S0 is just a point mass. So this means that since we need really strategic exploration, because it is just point mass and it, it's not good data. And we also assume that we can reset anytime uh, if we want. So we can reset to the initial state distribution. That's the uh, online setting we consider. And our goal is as follows. Our goal is maximize uh, finding a policy which maximizes the policy value. And J pi PR denotes the policy value under policy pi and model P and reward R. And P star denotes a true uh, transition density. And of course, like uh, it's unknown. So that's why we need to interact with the environment. Right? So that's our goal. And we need to do it in a statistically efficient manner. And uh, so J by PR is, uh, I forgot to say, it's a cumulative discounted reward. Next, I explain uh, our models. Our models are low rank MDPs. The, let's see the left hand side matrix. It uh, represents a transition, uh, true transition dynamics. And so the number of columns is S, and the number below is S times A. And here, our assumption is that P stir admits a low rank decomposition. So here, like P stir is an inner product of a mu stir and phi stir. And both features are d dimensional. And importantly, we assume that uh, both features are unknown. So this means that we have some function classes which includes mu stir and phi stir but we don't assume that phi star is known a priori. And I'm going to stress out, this is, uh, this is different from linear MDP. So linear MDP has several definitions, like linear and uh, Mendy's paper and also Chijin's and his co-author's paper. But in both cases, they assume that features are known. Instead, uh, in low rank MDPs, uh, we assume we don't assume features are known. So that's a huge difference. And low rank MDPs are really nonlinear models because uh, like when we use like linear MDPs or Gaussian process, also Gaussian process can be like uh, non, I mean, people say it's nonlinear, but theory wise, like it is linear in some infinite dimensional feature. And we know that feature basically. But here, since we don't know features, so there's no like, it, the model itself is nonlinear. That's why uh, this mod model is very challenging. And next, I want to explain low rank MDPs are uh, general. 
and also useful. So, so you can see that uh, here, the low-rank MDPs include a very useful models called latent variable models. In latent variable models, given S and A, S prime is generated following phi star, and phi star is a kind of a feature, and this feature is a basic PDF. And given Z, S prime is generated uh, following a new star. And low-rank MDP, low MDP is a much more general than uh, this uh, MDP, uh, this um, latent variable models, because in latent variable models, there is an assumption like new star and five stars are uh, non-negative because it is a PDF. But in low rank MDPs, new star and five star, so if you go back, new star and five star can be like uh, negative still. So in that sense, comparing to our low rank uh, latent variable models, low rank MDPs are much more richer and we can say the same thing for block MDPs. And secondly, low rank MDPs are really practical because, uh, for example, like in movie recommendation, low rank assumption is really used a lot in practice. And besides, uh, low rank MDPs, I mean, block MDPs or latent variable models, like special in instances of uh, low rank MDPs, are uh, really used in some empirical papers either. So that's why like, there is a meaning to consider like theoretical, like uh, algorithm with theoretical guarantee on low rank MDPs. So low rank MDPs are, I mean, uh, not uh, imaginary models for theoreticians and really practical. Next, I'm gonna give you the summary of the existing works. The first three columns uh, is an uh, algorithm which works for very general models. And if we apply these algorithms to low rank MDPs, like all of like witness rank by the UCB, we can get some sample complexity. And you can see that the sample complexity is actually not so bad, I'm actually good. However, these algorithms are not computationally efficient because these algorithms are based on phase-based uh, style algorithms in the sense that they need to solve the constraint optimization every episode, and that constraint is uh, imposed on the function class. And so it's not, um, it's the, it's difficult to solve that kind of problem. So that's why it is computationally uh, inefficient. And the fourth and fifth uh, columns, uh, sorry, rows, uh, MOFO and Frambe. And first, like MOFO uh, works on latent variable models, but it does not ensure like uh, polynomial sample complexity on low rank MDPs. And Flambe like uh, works on low-rank MDPs, and it gives uh, it ensures a polynomial sample complexity. But uh, it can you can see that uh, I think now has a question, but I think we we can take that question. So uh, so let me proceed, and. You can see that sample complexity is very bad, like because D to seven and one of epsilon to 10 is definitely not good. And these algorithms are computationally efficient in the sense that um, they are oracle efficient. So oracle efficiencies are used to uh, capture like the computationally efficiency in bandits and also reinforcement learning. So here, the key idea is, let's say, I have some oracle, like empirical risk minimization oracle. For example, it can be uh, non-regression or classification. 
And of course, like uh, it can be non-convex when we use neural networks, but it's like feasible in practice, right? So our goal is to seek to design an algorithm that runs in polynomial time by, I mean, with each oracle like counting as O1. So we just like query like this oracle in polynomial time. So that's the meaning of oracle efficiency. And this reduction to supervised learning uh, has led to really like many successful practical applications in contextual bandits. Like for example, like there are many uh, very nice papers by people in MSR and these are algorithms are oracle efficient and it is really used for real world applications. So that's, I'm gonna say that Oracle efficiency is almost equivalent to like computational efficient algorithm. Okay, and so under like, uh, and now like Flambe is a state of the art which works on low rank MDPs. And let me use CB, our new algorithm which works on low rank MDPs and it ensures polynomial sample complexity and also our algorithm is Oracle efficient. And importantly, we just uh, use the same Oracle as from Bay. So our comparison is very fair because the Oracles are really the same. Uh, do you have any questions so far? No, this would have been my question, whether it's the same Oracle or no, but you already answered it. Otherwise, oh, it's thank very you. clear. Now, I'm going to talk about uh, our contribution on FUCB. Here is our assumption. We assume we, assume we have a realizable hypothesis classes. So they call Muster and Five Star True Features. And Gamma and Phi includes these true features. This is assumption. And the second assumption is we have a computation oracle. This oracle is maximum likelihood estimation oracle. So here, given data, like we are just solving like, uh, we are just performing MLE. And of course, it can be like non-convex, but this is, um, I mean, not crazy oracle, right? And for example, like in tabular MDPs, also like features are known in tabular MDPs, like we know that it is a counting estimator, and when we use neural networks, like for mu and phi, we can still like run FGD and we can basically like, um, I think like optimization is, I mean, feasible. So in that sense, this Oracle is not crazy Oracle. Our goal is finding an epsilon optimal policy with a, a tight polynomial sample complexity with respect to A and D and so on. So here is our goal. Next, um, let me, I'm gonna talk about our algorithm, FUCB. So uh, oh, oh, so wait a second, I, I have a question about this Oracle. Uh, sure. Because you, you say that it's a reasonable and mm -hmm. not too crazy one, but I'm just wondering, like, does the low rank structure help here or hurt here? Or like, what do you think about this? Because to me, like, this is like a bilinear function, like disregarding the log, right? And that is not necessarily convex if mu and phi are allowed to be positive and negative. So I think if phi star is, for example, known and mm -hmm. mu star is, uh, and then I think it's, for example, mu starts linear in some parameter, it is convex. Yeah, yeah. If sure. those are unknown, like it's unclear, like generally, I feel. Right, yeah, I guess if one of them is known and only mm -hmm. the other one needs to be optimized, then it is linear in some, mm -hmm. in some kind of a feature map, then, then it is easy to optimize. But if both of them are unknown, then it's not completely clear. Yeah, that's a good point and also a little bit controversial point. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see your point. Yeah, we can return to this later. Thank you. Thank you. So here is our algorithm. And our algorithm is uh, basically iterating some uh, same process from n is equal to 1 from n to large n. And large n is the number of episodes. And so let's consider at iteration n, like small n. And at this point, I have on a policy like pi n minus 1. So this is policy I have in the beginning of our iteration n. And so here, d by p means uh, this kind of occupancy measure induced by policy pi and uh, uh, model p. So this means that, so I'm going to like just rolling out pi n minus 1. And then I can uh, get s. And then rolling out uniform actions twice, I can get the uh, tuple like s, a, s prime, and a prime, and s tilde prime. Then I conc we concatenate uh, this new topo with existing data. And there are two data sets. The first data set is a concatenation of S and N and S prime. And the second data is a concatenation of S prime and A prime and S tilde prime. And I'm going to explain later why we need to keep two data sets. So now we can make a new data set at iteration n. Next, uh, let's perform MLE. And here, you can see that we use two data sets, like dn and dn prime. And then uh, we run MLE on this data set. And we can get like p hat n. This is a model estimator. And phi hat n. It's a like learn feature. Next, uh, using that learn feature, we construct the bonus b hat n, and you can see that the covariance matrix is uh, also using data d n. And uh, this construction is very um, standard in linear bandits, but the key difference is we are learning feature phi like phi. So this feature is changing at every iteration. So that's the key difference. Ne next, uh, after constructing the bonus, we solve the planning problem. So the planning problem is uh, defined inside the learned model p hat n, and also the uh, bonus enhanced reward r plus b hat n. And this planning oracle is computationally efficient because we p hat n is basically like linear in phi hat n. So we can say that q function is linear in phi hat n. Just, uh, we can just use uh, least square value iteration on linear models like linear MDP papers. and it runs in polynomial time with some negligible errors. So in that sense, this part is still computationally efficient. Uh, in summary, so this is a procedure, just learning feature at every episode and using UCB type bonus at every episode. So it's pretty much simple, right? So is, is the reward also linear in the features or, or not necessarily? Our uh, reward can be basically anything. And that doesn't hurt the efficiency of least squares value iteration. Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. but, but I guess another question that, that Nan just asked is that, uh, is the reward function known? Uh, it can be unknown, and if I think it's unknown, probably it needs to be linear in uh, phi, probably. Now we assume it's known. Mm -hmm. I think it can be unknown either. 
Yeah, that's that's exactly what he was posting here in the chat as well. That it needs to be either known or linear M five. Yeah, exactly. I, I think so. Yeah, thank you. Now, yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. And I think I had now mentioned like that if we want to like use this algorithm for real world applications, we can still like do that. For example, uh, we can use neural networks and then find is just the, the feature in the last layer. And we can use that feature like uh, in the constructs bonus and we can just do iteration. So yeah. So, so Kamiyara is asking about the sample use. So are you using just two sample state action pairs per episode and you throw everything away or? Or are you you're using just two sample parts episodes? Uh, I mean, like the n minus one is a concatenation of the existing date. I mean, we are con just update. We are increasing the number of data at every episode. Uh, yeah, but uh, so looking at the procedure, you say that you sample s from the occupancy measure, mm -hmm. which I guess means that you're resetting to s zero and then you just roll out and. You just geometrically stop and then you pick S, right? Exactly, yeah. And then you take an action and then you take S prime and then you take another action A prime. And another action and another state uh, S tilde prime. And then you start a new episode, right? Or then you yes. reset to S zero. I see, yeah. I see. So it's, so it's only these transitions that you use. Yes, yeah, yes. Thank you for clarification. Okay, well, yeah. So, right, well, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Well, here is our theoretical result. Let pi hat b be a mixture of pi one to pi n, and n is the, uh, the number of episodes, large n is the number of episodes. And then with high probability, uh, the algorithm finds an uh, episode near optimal policy pi hat uh, with uh, number of samples, like uh, this sample complexity, and records that D is a rank of low rank MDPs and log of uh, gamma and phi is gamma and phi are the number of function classes. And uh, you can see that. Uh, Comparing to the prior state of the art from B, uh, all parameters are improved. And some people might um, wonder, like, or like, we are, looks, you assume that the function classes are finite, but uh, the extension to the infinite hypothesis classes is uh, relatively easy in the sense that we can use log covering number with respect to error infinity norm for gamma and phi, and still everything goes through. So we can still consider infinite hypothesis classes either. Okay. So before diving into the proof, let's see like uh, key challenges, like at more high level like sense. The first uh, thing I want to emphasize is that our algorithm is different from really from B. The difference is lab UCB is UCB driven, but from B is uh, exploring commit style algorithm. So that's why like the sample complexity is much better in lab UCB. And so from B is basically like, uh, exploring like like perform reward free learning and then like do planning after uh finishing reward free like learning so that's in that sense like it is express and commit so let me skip this second point and next i'm gonna uh emphasize differences uh, comparing the standard models in many models like linear MDPs, like kernel, kernelized nonlinear regulators, which is a generalization of LQRs, 
and also Gaussian processes. Basically, models are linear with known features. And in low lung MDPs, features are known. Thus, our models are nonlinear. It leads to two challenges. The first challenge is in linear models, we can get pointwise error quantification. But in low rank MDPs, we cannot. So this means that let's say uh, we know features phi star, and then we can uh, make the covariance matrix on the true feature phi star, and then we can get the following guarantee. So here I assume features are known. And just like new hat is learned, learned feature, and f is um, any function. And we can get this guarantee using cost schwartz and also regression like guarantee easily. And the right hand side, so it, it's uh, upper bounding the error for the model by uh, elliptical potential on the true features. And using this kind of guarantee, we can, for example, prove the optimism. And that's what is happening uh, in the proof of like linear models. However, in our case, we cannot get this type of error like for any S and A. So that's uh, why the proof is challenging. And the second point is in linear models, features in, in bonus are fixed at every iteration, but in low rank MDPs, features are, are changing every time. So that's the second challenge. Hey, Masa, can I ask a question about the previous slide? Sure. So the, the, the inequality you show in the middle, it doesn't hold unconditionally, right? And it has, you have to use the fact that mu hat is trained under D, right? Mu uh, hat? Uh, I, I'm just asking, like, is this inequality like you know just always true, or, uh, or or you have to use the fact that new head is learned under the distribution D? Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, we are, I'm assuming new hat is like, yes, like learned on the distribution. It's D. like it's like a minimize MLE for three star combined with mu, uh, uh, like fixed feet fix V star and then you learn mu by minimizing MLE under D. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Here's overview of our proof. It consists of three steps. The first step is showing optimism, almost optimism at the initial distribution. And that's challenging because we don't have a point-wise uh, error guarantee. The second step is uh, letting be in stir with elliptical potential on the true features. We want to upper bound the per iteration regret. And recall that uh, pi n is a policy at iteration n. And uh, yes, so okay. And that's also challenging because features are always changing at every episode. The third step is elliptical potential lemma. So this means that I'm just summing up per step per iteration regrets over the number over whole episodes. And then uh, we can upper bound the sum of per iteration regrets like with just square root n. Okay. So first, Let's see the uh, first step in detail. Uh, sorry, before going to the first step, uh, let me introduce some notation. Let low n and low n prime be marginal PDFs over the data dn and dn prime. Okay. And recall that dn and dn prime are generated in the following way. So it is a mixture of S and S and S prime and S prime and A prime and S to the prime from uh, episode N, episode one to episode small n minus one. So this zero is actually should be one. 
Okay. And the first key tool is as follows. We can uh, just use the MLA guarantee. And it says that the total variation distance between the learned model and the true model are uh, upper bounded by one over n, a small n, and small n is the number of the, uh, the data size. And here I'm using the um, L1 distance, but the L1 distance is equi equivalent to total variation distance, right? So here is, this means that the total variation distance of p hat n and p star, and it's marginalized over the training data set, rho n plus rho n prime, because we run MLE on the data set dn and the dn prime. So that's why we can get this guarantee. Okay, so next, uh, let's show the optimism at the initial, st initial distribution. So here, the idea is, okay, like we cannot get, we cannot show point-wise error guarantee, but we can still show optimism in the distribution sense. So here, it's saying that for any policy pi and any iteration n, we can ensure that the learned model, like, p hat n and the r plus p hat n, the policy value under this learned model is always bigger than the uh, true policy value for policy pi. And the right hand side is basically a negligible term. How to prove that? So the first step is using performance difference lemma inside the learned model. So this is, uh, and the key difference that like, comparing to the previous like uh, proceed, pre previous work is that we use performance mm -hmm. difference lemma in the learned model. So like performance difference lemma are used a lot like in our literature, but usually like they use uh, this lemma uh, inside the true model in the sense that this, uh, p hat n in the expectation is usually p star, but we flip the role, so that's why that like, expectation is taken over the uh, basically learn, learned model, and that's very important. And we can show that the both terms p hat n and the L of the MLA term uh, have the same order up to some negligible error. And, and basically that's done. And hmm, okay, so I have a I have a quick question here, uh, which is, uh, do you do you assume that p hat n is a valid model so that it's a probability distribution, or you don't need that? Uh, yeah, that's also the hidden assumption. So p hat n is probability distribution. Yes, that's what we assume. I see, I see. So it's not just the maximum likelihood over mu hat and phi hat, but mm -hmm. also under the constraint that the two together should lead to a probability distribution. And this is the step where this is needed, or? I think this is needed, yeah. And yeah, that's a very good point. And that's why we first say that latent variable modules are practically used, and it is a special mm -hmm. instance mm -hmm. of Roland MDPs, because latent variable models satisfy this constraint, right? So like p hat n is a PDF. Right, I see. Okay, thank you. That's very helpful. Yeah, thank you, yeah. And this step is not trivial. I mean, showing the both order the same is already not non-trivial, but uh, we can do that. And another thing I want to emphasize is that Okay, like people who are familiar with other literature might think that, oh, like this almost optimism at initial distribution is already used in like many works, like for example, uh, bilinear rank paper and also the uh, Bellman linear complete, Bellman linear, Bellman complete linear MD paper by Andrea and also his co authors also use the same idea, like almost optimism at initial distribution. But here, like, there are two differences. 
the first difference is in these previous literature, they use version-based algorithms. So when we use version-based algorithms, showing like um, optimism as initial distribution is, I think, relatively easy if you know how to do that. But here, we are using the UCB bonus. So that's why like, it is non-trivial still. And the second difference is we are showing like, almost, optimism, not almost optimism in the sense that not exactly optimism. So there is some still error term. And so that's the uh, two differences. Okay, and next, let's go to the uh, second step. After showing the optimism, using performance difference lemma inside the true model. So this is very standard. This step is still standard. I mean, and you can see that expectation is taken over P star. However, like still P hat N is using the learned feature. So the question here is, can we connect B hat N with the true elliptical potential BN star? And BN star is defined on a uh, phi star. And okay, the answer is yes. Like we can use, we can do that by using the following tool. And this tool is saying that for any G, function G, we can upper bound uh, the left hand side uh, by the right hand side. And the right hand side is saying that uh, the first term is elliptical potential on the true feature. And the second term is uh, some uh, term we need to like, it requires extra care. So let's invoke this uh, lemma in our case. And I forgot to say, but rho n, recall, rho n is the marginal PDFs over the data dn. OK, so first, let's use this tool by setting g is equal to b hat n. And the, the part we need to like calculate is the green part. The green part is actually we can show that uh, it's scaled with order d, square root d. The intuitive reason is b hat n is using the data dn and rho n is the marginal distribution over the same data set. So that's why like, uh, we can still up upon in a good way. Secondly, we need to again use a one step back trick by setting g is equal to f hat n. And uh, again, we can show that the green part is in the, in the order of the polynomial sample complexity. And this is just a memory guarantee. Recall Fn is a memory error, and it is taken on the training data set, like the margin of the training set rho n. So that's why we can upper bound again. And combining uh, these two stuff, we can immediately show that per step iteration regret is upper bounded by uh, two terms, like some first term is polynomial, like polynomial in D and also the number of function classes. And the second term is a true elliptical, true elliptical potential on the true feature. Okay. And after showing uh, this guarantee, the third step is uh, very trivial. So we just like summing up over uh, the iterations. And then uh, by invoking elliptical potential lemma, we can upper bound the uh, kind of quasi degrade and then we can get final sample complexity. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, that's all. And in hindsight, uh, this proof is very simple, like at least like overview is very simple, but I want to emphasize that like, this is still non-trivial because when like 
people like the authors in Crown Bay are like Akshay and also like Alec and Sharma and Wen. All of them are very strong, but they didn't notice that at least how to prove in this way. So I'm gonna say this is not, in hindsight, it looks very clean, but there are like several non-trivial steps here. So that's like why this proof is, I think, interesting. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Yeah, but maybe they are a bit too technical. So maybe let's save that a little later. Sure. And I don't think I have time like to explain offline setting uh, in detail. So let me summarize the, the result in the offline setting. In the offline setting, uh, the assumption is we have a huge offline data set and we cannot interact with the environment. And the goal is finding a good policy from the uh, data set D. And we want to say that our algorithms works under partial coverage. So we need to define what is partial coverage. And the partial coverage is saying that a comparator policy, uh, sorry, that we, we first define what is the meaning of the covered. So we say that comparator policy pi is covered by foreign data if the relative condition number is bounded in the uh, relative condition number sense. And th this relative condition number is defined on the true feature. And the goal is to, to learn under partial coverage that is, as long as there's a high quality policy that is covered by the offline data, we want to compete against it. And comparing it to the previous literature, like in linear MDPs, already there's this concept. But in linear MDPs, features are known a priori. But in long rack MDPs, we don't know features a priori. So that's why it is challenging, because we don't know why star a priori. So, I mean, that's like why we need like uh, constant algorithms and also we like need to think about the proof very carefully. And our algorithm is very simple. It's just like the, almost the same, like learning MRE, construction penalty, and we just do planning. Uh, so the only difference is we use like the penalty instead of the bonus. So the signs are flipped and it ensures a partial coverage guarantee in the sense that we can compete any policy pi uh, stir, uh, pi stir, if C pi stir, like this relative condition number, uh, I mean, the coefficient is upper bounded and then we can still compete any policy. And our algorithm is also Oracle efficient, so computation efficient. And although there are papers like CPPO, that's our paper, and also like the other paper like Tanya and also his cost as a paper can also get similar guarantee, but their algorithms, algorithms are not Oracle efficient. So our algorithm is the first Oracle efficient algorithm which are, works under the partial coverage. And let me skip this proof. Basically, the proof is very similar to the uh, online part. So last three, uh, I'm going to give you the summary. And before giving a summary, uh, I just want to acknowledge also other works. Like There are several works about representation learning and reinforcement learning. So like, these type of, and there are many, but these works are still very different from our works. And okay, so this is a, like a summary. First, we propose an online RL algorithm for low rank MDPs, and it has some type sample complexity, and also it is Oracle efficient. And the second contribution is we propose offline RL algorithm for low rank MDPs and which works under partial coverage and also it is all efficient. And uh, there are several future directions. And so this is like, uh, my takes time, but like the first stuff, first thing is linear MDPs. 
we low rank MDPs capture linear MDPs in, uh, I mean, Chi and his consul's paper, but we, um, there's like low gamma term in our result. And the naive analysis is like polyase, like, I mean, naive upper bound for low, the number of log number of gamma is polyase. So how we can get like, how we can avoid is uh, non-trivial, but I think probably it might be possible. And the second uh, question is, okay, like FUCB only also works for reward-free learning. And uh, Shrejo like uh, figured it out how to do that by uh, modifying FUCB a little bit. So that's also possible. And the second uh, question, the third question is, whether we can learn in Bellman complete low rank MDPs. That's also an interesting question. And the fourth question is, uh, our low rank MDPs, again, the capture block MDPs, but there's log uh, gamma, and the gamma is for muster again. And in block MDPs, we really want to avoid like that dependence. And so that's uh, another point we want to do. And actually, like our new paper solves this problem. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. So that's all. All right, thank you, Masa. It was very nice. Excellent. So uh, there has been an ongoing discussion in the chat. I don't know if there are any open loose ends over there. Somebody wants to still ask us a question. From there. Okay, so maybe I can maybe I can just uh, ask my technical questions about uh, about the proofs uh, because I guess like the the result itself is like very clean and uh, very well presented. So I don't think there's too many questions to be asked about that, but uh, but regarding the proof, there are two details that you did not explain fully, which was so when you're treating the first term using uh, the performance difference level for p hat, you say that there are these two terms that can be shown to be of the same order, mm -hmm. and then you say that that's challenging and complicated. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I agree that it's challenging and complicated because I don't do not really see any mm -hmm. obvious way of observing this. So, can you give some clarity about that? Like, how does the argument go on a high level? Yeah, th that's very good point. And yeah, so I added detail in the nice. end of that because probably yeah, it's not looks yeah, it's non-trivial still. So that that's a very good question. And here we need to use like one step back trick here again. Mm -hmm. So there's a trick like the second equation. This uh, equation is saying that for any G, uh, so it G is like P, the emeriator, and we can upper bound using uh, some inequality. Mm -hmm. And the second term in the right hand side can be also upper bounded uh, using the emery error guarantee because G is like emery error and we run emery on the training data set uh, D prime N and low prime N is a marginal distribution of D prime N. So that's <laughs> why we also need to use two data sets that like keep two, two data sets because we want to ensure the MRE guarantee on this low prime n. Mm -hmm. So that's why the second term is also bounded. And after like we can upper bound the second term uh, in basically the order is uh, O1, O, no, not O1, but polynomial in D mm -hmm. and or log of like function classes. And then uh, we can say that we can uh, choose this C. So this C is a constant before the bonus term. Mm -hmm. And by choosing this C like in a good way, 
uh, we can say that both orders are the same up to some uh, negligible errors. Right. Uh, I guess this is what brings me to my second question, is which is uh, which is about this one step back trick, which I'm not sure I understand. Uh, so I don't know where this comes from, or can you explain this a little bit? Is this some Cauchy Schwartz or multiplying and dividing and using Cauchy Schwartz? Uh, I don't know. Like, can you maybe try to explain? Yeah. So I think this trick is actually a uh, already there in front of the paper. And the, the reason why it's called one step back is mm -hmm. like starting from d pi p hat n mm -hmm. first, like we d pi p hat n is uh, like we can do, let's go to one step back in the sense that d pi p hat n is equal to, or let's go to the it's considered a finite rising setting, it's easy because, so let's say that d pi p hat n is, has an index at horizon h, right? So it's mm -hmm. a marginal distribution at time h, horizon at time h. And this trick is saying that, okay, so d pi, so marginal distribution at h is uh, represented by marginal distribution at h minus one. Mm -hmm with um, like marginal distribution of P star times marginal distribution at H minus mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And P hat N is a, has a low rank structure, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why like we can use uh, basically Cauchy words in the sense that P hat N is, has a low rank structure and we can use Cauchy words for this inner product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wayne's, I think, typing in a good way. Yeah, yeah I think I understood it well from your exp explanation. Uh -huh. uh huh, right, I see. So you just write this distribution in this kind of low rank form. And then you just multiply and divide with something and use Cauchy Schwartz. At least I think. But okay, so but the way that you're using it here is a little bit different from the way that you were using it in the other leg of the proof. Something, something, Cauchy Schwartz, yeah. Or uh, AMGM. Mm -hmm. But no, 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 so I guess what I was saying is that uh, here you're using this with row prime and in the other one, in the other application, you use it oh. with row. Yeah, exactly. So there are like two types. Yes, yeah. So all, proof is almost the same. Oh, okay. So I think everybody is probably mentioning that. Okay, so this part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is a one step back trick in the true model. Mm -hmm. that you can see that like, this is about P star. Mm -hmm. And so another one is uh, here. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Another one is like using just P hat N. So mm -hmm. in the learned model, that's the difference. Right, but I guess that one is like a two step back trick. Oh, because there you're taking yet another step forward with S prime A prime. Our this row prime was coming from the the occupancy measure composed to the uniform transition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, well, my impression was that row prime was from mm -hmm. a distribution that is already like yet another step ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the reason why it is different is, okay, so the, here, like we use,
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's so, like an extremely technical question for. Oh yeah, it might be technical, but, but uh, yeah, but yeah, that's a good point. And the the intuitive answer is the bonus is also related here. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. use push words, and this bonus b hat n is taken for the uh, basically uh, d n and low prime n is corresponds to d prime n. So the the bonus in, in the b hat n is a one step back mm -hmm. comparing to this low prime n. So that's the meaning of one step back. I see. I see. OK, I think I get it. Mm -hmm. All right, good. And then, and then regarding like all these open problems that you mentioned in the end, like this uh, log gamma factors for uh, for linear MDPs and for block MDPs, you said that you think that maybe this can be removed and you have some ideas regarding that. So I don't know, can you share all these ideas? So in block MDPs, yeah, we already have a paper. Oh yeah, right, so, so that's fair, yeah. It's in linear MDPs, honestly, like I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, so that's still, Bothers me, but someone might have some idea like in the audience. So, right. yeah, so really like new for the linear MDPs looks like has infinite statistical complexity, and it's not obvious, like for example, how to do covering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. I guess the question is that if you want to get something nicer than this, then you need to work in the space of value functions or Q functions rather than in the space of models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel so. So actually, like in the, the fourth, first, first point and fourth point are very related in the sense that in the fourth point, like in our paper, we use a model-free approach, basically. So basically, we work on the Q function, the space of Q functions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as Gerigo said, like in linear MVPs, we know that if we work on the Q function, and then like we don't need to worry about the statistical complexity of like mu. So probably like since we are taking model-based yeah. approach, so that might be the limit of our approach. Right, and 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 I suppose. And I suppose in, in all of these results, you're assuming that um, the norms of all the phi and the mu are bounded by a constant, right? Oh, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, so does that, does that happen with linear MDPs? So for example, can you do something like, I don't know, like fix the features and then do like least squares regression for, for the mu hat? That, that doesn't give bounded features for, for mu hat, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm just th thinking that maybe you can like calculate this and this MLE thing by some alternating optimization thing that you get your phi and then you optimize from you hat and then just repeat this over and over again. But that is that doesn't seem to be suitable at all here because because the mu hat that you're getting there is not going to be a bounded norm, right? Because yes. of the matrix inverses and stuff. Yeah, I think mu hat doesn't have a bounded norm. That's also uh, why it's difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, I see. Well, this is still great progress in any case. So uh, it's actually pretty surprising to me that um, that you can that you could get something so nice and neat just using the learn features to uh, to explore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of interesting discussion going on in the chat. I might stop the recording in case anyone wants to ask anything off the record. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs>